And the weather will matter for the event we're going to now. So you might remember the iconic orange and red hot air balloon that was used in BBC trails across the late 90s before it was retired. Do you know, even though it's 20 years ago, if you remember it, it, you will never forget it. And it's now being restored. It's on display at the Midlands Air Festival, where Fiona Landon is. And she's somewhere. There it is. You can... To this day, I still remember it beautifully. I'm so glad it's back up. Is it in the air yet, Fiona? So it's tethered. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Naga. It is tethered uh, to this basket. Uh, they've just got the burner going. And this is the first time it has been on public view for more than 20 years. It's gorgeous when they keep putting that burner, because I can tell you it's quite cold here. For the first time in 20 years, she is out the bag, she's on public view, and I've been taking a look back at how she got here. It was the defining image on BBC One for almost five years, between 97 and 2002. A real balloon with over 100 hours of flying time and many more of airtime, filmed in 30 different locations, including the Scottish Highlands, Snowdonia and Grey Abbey in Northern Ireland. In 2000, the BBC wanted the balloon to become more inclusive, so it was filmed with skateboarders, a carnival and even a bungee jumper. But eventually, in 2002, it was time for it to retire. It's had 100 hours of flying time. And breakfast's very own John Kay was on the last flight with its pilot, James Mossman. Being on BBC One was just uh, something that was just never been done before. And 21 years ago, it was put into a big bag, which was put into storage and completely forgotten about until now. A friend of ours in uh, North Bristol said he had a shape for us, for our collection to look after, and when we went to collect that one, he said he had another two, and the BBC Globe was part of it. What did you think? Uh, well, it's so, quite surreal, because uh, when I was a child, I remember it on telly, seeing the uh, BBC items and stuff, and to have it there in your garage, it's quite surreal. And for the last four months, these Bristol brothers have been restoring it. Hundreds of stitches around the mouth, cleaning and painting. Red tends to fade a bit more than any other colour. If you were to put this bottom half of the envelope through a grab test, which is an MOT pretty much for blues, I reckon it would pass easy. So 26 years ago, were all these clouds hand-painted? Yes, so they'd have staff at the Camerons. I don't know how many they'd use, but yeah, they would have hand-painted every single cloud on this envelope. Nowadays, they use digital printing, so painting's long gone now. And as the paint dries, the globe is ready for inflation. And finally, after two decades, she is filled with hot air again as she gets ready to meet her public. This morning we have James with us, the original pilot that you saw in the piece flying with John 20 years ago. Good morning to you. Hello. These two are having the most wonderful catch up, Mark and James, because they haven't seen each other for two decades. Um, where do we start? So initially, Mark, you were telling me it was just going to be um, a computer-generated design. Yeah, because in the, in the late 1990s, that's when CGI first came along, and the whole idea was that they were going to literally montage this on top of some images, but it didn't really work. The, 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 the technology wasn't there. So they came and they said, can we do it as a real one? We said, of course we can, and here we are. And here we are, and so the colours were meant to be green and blue. Yes, yeah, I mean, the whole concept was originally, it was the World Globe, the BBC World Globe. But when we saw the images that were coming back, the test images, the balloon didn't stand out because the balloon's blue and green against mostly blue and green backgrounds. And the agency then said, OK, let's change the colours. So the opposite of blue and green are red and orange. And then the balloon really stands out. So then we get James involved. And James, you were the pilot. Yes. How many... I mean, you must know this balloon so well. I certainly got to know it incredibly well, yeah. We were out on the road for seven solid weeks. It was a fantastic trip. Just watching the weather, 
looking at the list of amazing places we're being asked to fly and uh, going there and getting the most out of the balloon and the wonderful British countryside. And you told me like one day you'd be there thinking, right, we're going to fly in the Docklands. That's then right, yeah. what happened, the weather wasn't good, so you That's right. down the we list. We couldn't fly, combination of airspace limitations and the, and, um, and the weather being too windy for us to fly in London. And it's like, where in the country can we go to where we know we can get this thing in the air? And so that was it, pack it all up in the back of the trailer and off to the Lake District. And we had some beautiful flights over the Western Fells, um, exploring that part of the world instead. Now, you also had some adventures. Tell us oh, the time you needed to be ones. rescued, because we've actually got <laughs> some photos. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, Island and Castle, the Highlander Castle, and as I grew up, it was a very famous castle because I loved that movie. And we were up there for about 10 days and we finally got in the air. But it was flying past the castle, getting the right shot for the cameraman, a combination of the camera and the helicopter that was always with us, and the guys on the ground as well filming. And, but the cloud base was below the mountaintops. We flew up the lock and along the water for about half an hour, and it was that time to find somewhere to land. But, um, of course, everything was kind of like this. It was like vertical, almost. But we had to land on the side and the gas running out, etc. So, so we ended up plonked on the side of a mountain here. And they even brought us in some emergency rations to cook on the burner. So what are you and cooking there? Baked beans? Baked beans and sausages, if I remember rightly. One of those emergency ration packs. <laughs> and so Pete, who's just over the way there, um, was our chief chef for the morning. And then we had to get a helicopter to come in and lift everything off how and take long, us back to base. How long were you stranded there for? Uh, from memory, I think it was about two and a half, three hours we were up the side of that mountain. But there's some, we did see a stag silhouetted against the cloud in the distance that morning. Wow, so you so had some amazing you, adventures. We did, yeah. It was a well, fantastic trip. So that's the past. Now, yeah. Mark, tell us, it's been in a bag for over 20 years, going from person to person to person. Now it's been found. What sort of condition? What is the future? I mean, she's tethered this morning. But do you think she will ever be able to fly again? We, we are hoping. I mean, the most important thing was that the balloon was actually stored in a dry condition. So when we were able to get it out, the next thing we needed to do was some restoration work because there was some minor damage. And I have to say a big thank you to Cameron Balloons who originally built it, who then did all the necessary repair work for us. Now, the next phase is that we've got to try and get it a certificate of airworthiness to be able to free fly, which is a very long and involved process that there's lots of paperwork and inspections and lots of things to be done. But we are really hopeful because it's in remarkably good condition. The fact that it's been stuck in a bag for 22 years and not touched, and when we got it out, it was like, wow, this looks really good. And the guys have done an amazing job of getting it restored. OK, well, thank you both so much. Amazing. I mean, I just story after story. But as you heard it there from Mark, she is in remarkable condition. So, fingers crossed, who knows? She's obviously tethered here for the public to see. But who knows? Big question marks. Maybe, just maybe, she might be able to fly once again. Well, that would be marvellous if she could. And they seem so serene, but actually very noisy. Well done, B. We had all of that over that noise. It was fabulous. It's a great shot, isn't it? Look at them. Great.